the title errant states um, on the geopolitical aesthetics of post-colonial failure and possibility will um, err more towards error than it will to errantry, but um, I'll try to keep both uh, components uh, in intention. And, um, you know, I'm willing to have you uh, challenge my main ideas in uh, question time. So I start with a question. Can there be anything more optimistically cruel than the post-colonial state? Apologies to Lauren Ballant. This is both much more than an affective belief in freedom's desire and much less than an allegory on the abstract antinomies of the nation state. If the 20th century witnessed an immense rolling back of imperialist predations, the end of the Cold War and the collapse of actually existing socialism has laid the groundwork for a new geopolitics in the last quarter century in which all that was solid in post-colonial delinking has melted into the air of neoliberal circulation and accumulation by dispossession. In a putatively postmodern world bereft of irony, Western theory has achieved escape velocity from its dependence on state-based reason. At the same time, decolonization swelled the ranks of nations to its highest number in the history of the idea. So it's an interesting contradiction. Um, just at the moment when postcoloniality finds the nation, we kind of let go of the nation idea. Once again, the global south is read as the heel of modernity, and critics of neoliberalism coruscatingly mime its borderless jouissance. Similar serendipity abounds. Thus, from the very moment politics stepped back from worn out ideologies of the worker state, the state of workers saw proletarianization reach levels never before seen in Western modernization. So in China alone, uh, a quarter of a billion uh, new proletarians. The latter is not just corporate coincidence. Note, for instance, that Apple can become the world's richest company by outsourcing and subcontracting labor principally to factories in China that dwarf anything in the Industrial Revolution. One factory in Longhua, where I've done some research, has employed up to 450,000 workers to make the iPhone 6, and I quote, profitable beyond belief, as one executive puts it. No, the surprising coincidence, as new historicists once termed it, is the emptying out of historical genuflection itself. It is as if the more we reflexively, reflexively account for intersectionality, the whole as totality in the moving contradictions of capital becomes kaleidoscopically obtuse, exploding fragments that refuse any and all pattern recognition. Thus, only fools would sing the nation state. Their failure merely proves the point. So, what do we mean by errant in this case? Is it the very name for moving contradictions as such? Why is it that the infamous failed states index now conceives failure in terms of fragility? And I'll return to this because that's actually part of the uh, uh, aesthetic provenance. Why would aesthetics be a key theoretical heuristic in what is otherwise a sea change in political concerns and political economy in particular? Is this not a familiar case of metonymic culturalism in which whatever is material in the infrastructure of state formation is simply made immaterial or is so stunningly new only the signifier adjudicates its substance. On the one hand, we might address the dialectical impasse of the post-colonial nation state. On the other, we must beware, I think, a theoretical fluency that discards the nation like severed heads by um, the Islamic state. Cosmopolitan intellectuals, including diasporic, migrant, and exiled post-colonial thinkers need lose little sleep over the false universalizations of the nation idea. Theory travels with different stamps, and cultural capital never saw a border it could not pass. The challenge of the errant state, however, is that its problematic can never be resolved by falling back into original distinctions as correctly contradictory. Culture does this, the economy does that, politics does whatever. This is where the aesthetic becomes forcefully interrogative, not just by underlining the nation cannot not fail, a term that I'll return to. It is, after all, historical and is just as destined to expire as our mortal coil. But by affirming that the prospect of failure is deeply felt and creatively engaged. 